Hi everyone, welcome to this very special episode of The Cutting Room, created for and voted by our Patreon supporters. My name is Luke, and with me are the doppelganger special of Westy and Matt. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Platoon last month, now it's the turn of Jim Carrey and The Truman Show, the film that Paramount called the most expensive art film ever made. Yeah. Going to be an interesting one, this one. First time talking about Jim Carrey. First time for Peter Weir as well. A nice refreshing change. And Matt, this was your choice, so mm. why this? I'll be honest, I didn't think he was going to win. Like, no. <laughs> right, that's that over with then. Yeah. I saw, well, I saw Wessie Let's take the tune, which it obviously won a poll for the classics. So I knew that was going to do well. I saw you, it, it yeah. picks Scorsese, you thought, oh, I'm playing Catra Pia. You know, but that's yeah. an interesting film. Yeah. I'll put it in. Um but yeah, Turn and the, the reason I picked it, it, it's not because it's an absolute all-time favourite, but I picked it for mm. two reasons. First, okay. and you, you've already mentioned it, um, I did want to talk about Peter Weir at some point because... I know you're a fan. I think, yeah, I am a fan. I think he's just in danger of being forgotten about, I think, because he's mm. retired. Yeah. And he's yeah. probably quite unread, but look at his filmography, you know, Picnic, Hanging Rock, Gallipoli, Witness, yeah. Master Commander, this, Fearless. It's a really Deadport. strong career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dead yeah, ports, yeah. yeah. Really strong race, so, you know, I'm glad that we get to talk about him. Mm. And the second reason is, for some reason, this is a film that's never really come up in conversation between us. No. So I generally don't really have much of an idea what you two think about it, so it's mm, going to be right. interesting, I think, from that perspective as well. Yes. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, very much. It's an odd one for me. I saw it at the cinema when it first came out in 98, mm. and I haven't seen it since. Wow. Wow. Only one bit of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, not until about a week ago, that is. I saw it with my dad. I went to the cinema with my dad in 98. And although I hadn't seen it, I've been constantly reminded about it by my dad. Sometimes when I recommend something for him to watch and he doesn't like it, he'll always bring up the Truman Show as an example of my bad taste. Nice. He oh, hated right. the film. Right. He hated wow. the film. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And he's still banging on about it, like literally last month. <laughs> like you, you mentioned it again. Wow. Like, oh, Christ, still going on about it 24 years later. <laughs> Holding a grudge there. Go. <laughs> really annoyed him. Um, I did enjoy the film from what I remember, but I think the main reason I didn't go back to it is because of Jim Carrey. I'm not his biggest fan, really. Yes, um, okay. I, I used to be. There was a window of time, about two years, where I, I loved him in the mid-90s. I saw Ace Ventura three times at the cinema, uh, a record for me. But my love quickly evaporated for Carrey, and I don't think I've seen him in anything since The Truman Show. So oh, revisiting wow. was interesting. And no, you've seen Man on Eternal Sunshine. Oh, Eternal Sunshine. I haven't seen either. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Revelations are plenty. Stitch that. Yeah. Did yeah. you see Man on the Moon there, Matt? I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Jesus Christ. That's the I knew. I, I knew you were going to bring both of those up, and I knew yeah. West you'd bring a man up with the moon, and I knew be, you'd be spotless mind, Matt. <laughs> it was opposite. <laughs> <laughs> was it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, <laughs> So like, well, you know Jim Carrey, doesn't it? Christ! <laughs> Tell you I haven't seen the films. If you'd seen them, you'd got it right. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Westy? Truman Show. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I, I saw it in the cinema as well, ninety eight. Um, and like you, look, I keep getting reminded of it, not through me, me dad or the fact that it was a bad film that I had to put him through, but because of it just seems so prominent in popular culture now. It just seems to mm. be, is this the Truman Show? Is this the Truman mm. Show? Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, and it's yeah. like, is this Groundhog Day? Is this the Truman Show? It kind of sits yeah, there a, in that in that kind of... It's a catch-all comment, isn't it? Yeah, that kind of parameter. And I think it did so well in creating that paranoia and it was ahead of its time. And mm. you just forget how good it is, really. Mm-hmm. And it, it is an accomplished film. And it's very enjoyable, and it comes in at just the right runtime, especially for you, Luke. Very much. Um, yeah, and yeah. I think it just ticks all the boxes. Yeah, I'm looking forward to talking about it. I'm glad we're, that we're talking about this, because I, I, I think that uh, it's one of them lucky ones where if Matt's chosen it where he thinks it's not going to be talked about, then it's it's a good one to, to kind of <laughs> yeah. bring up and go, you know, it's actually a really important film. Yeah. yeah, a nice refreshing change, a change of gear for us, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. Okay, so let's get into it. We are live on the air and unaware as we have a star and role in The Truman Show. Truman Burbank lives a seemingly perfect life in Sea Haven Island, blissfully unaware that he is a star and role in a worldwide TV experiment. Truman begins to get suspicious when some on-set mishaps stir up past emotions, pulling all his co-stars and the viewing public on red alert as a desperate Truman plots his escape to Fiji. The Truman Show was written by Andrew Nichol, directed by Peter Weir and produced by Scott Rudin, Andrew Nichol, Edward S. Fellman and Adam Schroeder for Scott Rudin Productions and distributed by Paramount Pictures. Jim Carrey stars as Truman Burbank, Laura Linney as his wife, Merrill. 
Natasha McElhorn as Sylvia and Ed Harris as the TV mogul Christoph. <laughs> Barrier and all. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Lovely Barrier. Samuel L. Christoph. <laughs> very, very Frank Spencer. <laughs> yeah. Imagine he turned into Frank Spencer at the end. <laughs> Truman's done a whoopsie in me Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing that. Oh. <laughs> Film could wind, oh. wind up on wind up on roller skates by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> if that's how he'd escaped, I would have fucking loved that. Just hanging <laughs> off the back of a is. bus <laughs> <laughs> with his arse out. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, as usual, we've talked about the director, the writer, the main cast, and we're picking out our highlights from the film before we rate it out of 10. And we're going to kick things off with the director, Peter Weir. As we like to talk about, Peter Weir wasn't the first man in the hot seat to direct The Truman Show. Brian De Palma was slated to direct initially, but had budgeted the film at $80 million, which was too high for the studio, an even mm. more expensive art film. Mm. Other names were considered Terry Gilliam, Sam Raimi, Steven Spielberg, and Tim Burton, but we came on board, a suggestion by right Andrew Nickel. Matt, you're a big fan of his work, so it's fitting yeah. that you talk about him first. Yeah. What do you think of his work on The Truman Show? I think it's really clever, because I think he's packaged and sold this film as a big studio summer blockbuster with Jim Carrey, absolute height of his fame, full of his usual comic japes, but that's just the superficial way you can look at this film, scratch the surface. I think what Weir has delivered is like the happiest horror film you'll ever see. <laughs> because I think you take a second thing about what Truman's life is, it's deeply disturbing. Like oh, underneath this constantly beautiful blue sky, every day is sunny, everyone's having a great day. It's all a lie. It's all a deceit. And everybody knows it apart from this one man. Mm -hmm. And what's also clever is Weir has got to shoot this so it looks a bit like a TV show but it's got to be yeah. cinematic at the same time. Yeah. And there are scenes, like especially in tees, where you think that, that that is a bit overlit, but it doesn't look cheap at the same time. It's very cleverly mm. done. Mm -hmm. But more than that, I think it's the way that we just sneaks these moments into the film that reveal themselves on repeat viewings that do create this paranoid, weird atmosphere that you get, which like I say, is completely at odds with how the film looks, which I find really effective. And there were so yeah. many. But just a couple, there's a scene where Truman, he's buying the magazine at the stall and there's a guy behind him reading the paper and the headline says, who needs Europe anyway? Really yeah. subliminal, you know, yeah. why leave you yeah. even? Don't go to Europe. And then yeah. when he goes to the travel agents as well, you know, there's two in there, that plane being hit by lightning on the poster, this could happen to you well, like, in <laughs> a travel so office. <laughs> in the insurance one as well, which is, um, have you got your travel insurance for street gangs and wild animals? Which, which you know, <laughs> really good job, I love that. So yeah. it, it's stuff that on first watch is funny and it does make you laugh, but the more you come back to it, I think when you know where it's going, I think the creepier that stuff is. All mm -hmm. those little POV shots where Truman's completely unaware of like the button cameras that are spying yeah. on. Great. And one of the most disturbing shots in the film, and just one that creeps you out quite a lot in general, that shot of baby Truman when he's in the script, they're doing the whole flashback thing. And yeah. he's looking over at his baby mobile and there's a camera yeah. in the middle just dangling. Mm -hmm. Like the ramifications of that are really disturbing. Really yeah. disturbing, especially when they say, oh, you know, Truman was the first baby to be adopted by a corporation. A horrible mm -hmm. concept when you think about it. So mm -hmm. I think what we has done here is really clever because he's put together something that is the complete opposite to what it looks and feels like on the surface. Something that's actually creepy and thought provoking all in a Jim Carrey comedy. Yeah. Very much, yeah. I mean, there's loads of incredible details in the background, for really minute, and you'll have to kind of watch and rewatch to take them in. But Truman taking vitamin D tablets because he's not getting any real sun. Yeah. He yeah. takes the ring from his dad when he drowns, but it's a camera ring, and he's blissfully unaware of that. Yeah. And yeah. he's listening to the classical music on the radio because classical music is generally in the public domain. There's no copyright costs for the TV studio. Yeah. yeah. It's very much a picture postcard town that we has created for Truman's world. Seaside set and very nice, always sunny, perfect sunsets. The classic kind of all American wholesome family environment, white picket fences, the perfect yeah. wife without a hair out of place, mm -hmm. who cooks and cleans and does an important job all with a big pearly smile on her face. Mm. <laughs> she's great, Laurel, and he's great. Yeah, yeah she's, she's fantastic. Good, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. 
The look was influenced by Norman Rockwell paintings and Sears catalogues from the 50s. A big influence seems to be, for me, uh, The Step for Wives from 75. But also I got some similarities to Blue Velvet. That starts off Mm. very much in the white picket fence vein, but scratch below the the surface. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Below the surface, you get the seedy underbelly of society and the severed ear. You don't get that here. No. There's no... Hopefully. (laughs) Hopefully, (laughs) yeah. There's no psycho-sexual sadomasochism in here like uh, Blue Velvet. More's the pity, but uh, it has a similar feel. <laughs> Maybe there is. They're just the cut away from it. Yeah. Like said, just the curtains move, a bit yeah, of wind yeah. blows in. You never see the good stuff. <laughs> you never see it. And this world's been created specifically for Truman, so he never wants to leave. But it also taps into what's going to be appealing for a worldwide audience as well. There's been mm. sold the dream of that idyllic life, possibly a reason why people are glued to their screens. They're all being manipulated almost as much as Truman. And most of the sets are really heavily lit, like you mentioned, Matt. We did that to place an emphasis on the fact that basically it's a 24-hour shopping channel. Everything is for sale. Yeah. I really like those in-your-face moments of product placement. Marlon <laughs> loves that beer. <laughs> he does. It's yeah. and always. Brewski. He comes the dog beer the first, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Great. Yeah. All of that together comes to life in the design of the world, the set design, the great setting of Seaside, a city in Florida where the film was shot, and yeah. the choices made by Peter Weir. He's not full of flashy camera moves, but he does make it all very interesting with the cameras dotted around town, those porthole shots that make us feel like we're peering into these conversations, very invasive, and, and all adding to the overall themes of the film. And you can't go wrong, finally, with that pencil sharpener cam. Magic. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Westy? Peter yeah, Wayne? I think Weir is one of the reasons why this film really, really works. Because mm. if you had somebody with more of a stamp on it, like we've said, like De Palma, like Burton, I think it might mm. have just been a little bit too far. And mm. their egos might have got in the way. I don't feel like this is yeah. Peter Weir's ego at all. I feel like he wants to make the film as it is on the page. There's elements in here of Burton. There's Edward Scissorhands' town, which looks very similar. Yeah, very there's much. elements of, of Hitchcock in here. You know, there's the 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 psycho cam where they put the vignette around the lens so it looks like it's it's peering through a hole. There's a lot mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. There's a lot of wide angles. Everything in the in the town is very static and very locked off. And then it goes to moving camera when it needs to show Truman's, like, you know, arc and adventure and move through mm-hmm. the story. But what you want is somebody like Peter Weir because Carey, at this point in his career, has done Ace Ventura 2, Cable Guy, and then Liar Liar was the last film he's done before this. And he's had yeah. a great time doing all them films. And sure. Liar Liar, to yeah, me, yeah. you just think, how far can he go with this? And he needs an emotional mm-hmm. punch. And I think you need somebody like Peter Weir to get that from him. I mean, I'm not going to call him a generic director because I don't feel he's very generic, but I do feel he's very honest and very open to the story. I mean, if you look at Dead Poet Society, if you look at Gallipoli, you don't just go, oh, this guy can direct a world war drama. You know, it's like, Hmm. no, that's that's the story of Gallipoli. That's all he wants to tell. And that's all he cares about. And he doesn't want to make a sequel and go any further with that. He's not, you know, Dick Donner doing Lethal Weapon. It's just like, he's not going to be that kind of director. Mm -hmm. So he wants to tell this story and wants to give it a timeless quality. And I honestly think anyone else but Peter Weir would have failed with that. I think Tim Burton would have put too much of a stamp on it. I think De Palma would have put too much of a stamp on it. I think they would have tried to make it their own, where this is its own. And I think you have to appreciate the source material. And that's what I think Peter Weir has done. And that's what he's done his whole career. And that's what he should be lauded for, really. I think he's a Mm -hmm. fantastic director of films. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, so Peter Weir, a safe pair of hands to see everything in the right direction, giving yeah. the film a real distinct identity. Definitely. Yeah. The master yeah. and commander of the Truman Show. Lovely. Print that. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the end of part one. Come back for part two where we've got loads more to get into on the Truman Show. 